Can we really make golf simple? It's a question I've often asked myself when teaching and when creating these YouTube videos. And hopefully, I try and make it as simple as possible, but why does our brain, why, 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 it goes wrong out in the golf course and we seem to seek the hardest possible thing? You know who you are. I'm actually probably creating this video for myself too. Today though, no matter your age, your ability, how long you've been playing golf, this is the best way to make it simple. Also, if you're having lessons, this is just gonna sit nicely alongside what your PJ Pro is advising you. Oh, grab a piece. We're gonna need a punch shot. But go on then. Can we actually make golf simple? What, what is it about golf that we try and make complicated? I'd love to hear what your thoughts on this are. Because it honestly, it baffles me. But let's talk about tip number one. I want you to think about this with your coach. Or if you're giving yourself lessons and you're self-taught. Next time you're at the range, grab your note section on your phone and just simply write down what you think the two triggers are for you, right? So it could be anything. It could be rhythm. It could be keep your head still. Whatever it is, write them down. Because that gives you some clarity. And I want you to do this, this way. One for the backswing, one for the downswing. So backswing gives you a thought of how you create everything to be square at the top. Downswing is our trigger thought. And that's exactly how we actually put some power into the ball, but also some consistency too. So what are they for you? What are those two thoughts? Now this is gonna be a toughie. Look at this shot I've got here. That actually wasn't a bad drive. We didn't have the normal wind here. Wind's into off our left and that rain is coming towards us, which doesn't look that nice. I'm gonna to have to play a nice punch shot. But one thing that's gonna be beneficial is this is gonna look good. Now on those swing thoughts, I want you to have the same ones no matter what long game shot you're hitting. So irons or driver, right? Because all we're doing is manipulating where that ball is in our stance to hit a different shot. Ball up driver, ball back punch shot. And the rest is in between. So my backswing thoughts is really feeling flat left wrist, downswing, right shoulder down. Really achieving these two point, points. I have clarity. Right. This is key to leave myself a good yardage for a wedge. Get it punched, get it running. Ball back, weight left. Same swing thoughts. Fade, baby! Just on the left semi. I've got better in my locker, that's for sure, but good wedge shot. We still have an opportunity for birdie. Now, point number two, this is a key one, and this is all associated with something you need to ask your pro or you need to think about yourself. You can do either. Internal, external triggers. And don't forget, there's three points to this. And the third one might be the one where you just go, oh, I can really make it now simple. Okay, so well, let's get a yardage before we go into point number two. So point number two, external or internal triggers. What do we mean by that? 102. All right, it's right on the number here. Right on the number. 50 all day long. Okay, so internal, external, what do we mean? So an internal trigger would be something I feel in my body to help me hit a good shot. An external trigger would be something I feel about the golf club, okay? I want you to play around with this. So there are basically internal, external triggers to whatever you're feeling, okay? Now, one thing I would say, if you are a higher handicap golfer, thinking about what your implement is doing a little bit more, may be more beneficial. So what I mean by this is, so say I, I was a slicer of the golf ball, your club face always pointed to the right. I would say to you, really feel you get that toe overtaking the heel. 
Now, if you are a lower handicap golfer, I might suggest a feeling with the body, a more internal factor. But really they're the same thing, but you're organizing them, hopefully one will give you a trigger. Now, obviously it does not, no rule with this. You may prefer internal, you may prefer external, but you've got to play around with that. So just clarifying that again. If you're a golfer coming into the golf ball, face is crazily open, you're a slicer, okay? High handicap golfer, I would put your attention on, right, okay, what have I got to do more with this club face? Lower handicap golfer, what have I got to do more with this body? Internal, external. Please, please, please try both, because as I said, there's no rule between them, and one of them might just be perfect for you. Now the final one. Let's sit this one away and discuss this going up to the green. 102. This is the money maker, right? If we get this right, after what is actually a good drive, a mediocre second, we've got a birdie opportunity. Ah, oh, sit. We're definitely pin high, so I'm gonna get my divot. So the final point to this puzzle, or the final piece to this puzzle, it's a healthy divot, isn't it? The one thing I don't like about that is, I know winter's coming. <laughs> it feels so wintery. So the final piece of this puzzle, have you ever thought about actually just making a golf swing? It might sound a crazy thing that, just making a golf swing, but I honestly, I can't remember personally the last time I did this. So if you're going to do this, there's just a few rules I want you to live by. That's good grip, it's good stance, good posture, grip it and rip it. I don't think, honestly, if you could tell me the last time you did it, please do, but I don't think many golfers can. And I just, I'm again, like I said at the start, this is definitely a video I need to live and breathe myself more. Right, live by these rules. These are your checkpoints. So I'm gonna do it with driver just because, I mean, we'll be happy with that, shall we? Pin high, baby. Okay, everyone in the clubhouse wondering why I'm getting out of driver. So this is what I mean by just allowing yourself to grip it and rip it. So checkpoints for your grip. Club into the fingers, meaty part sat on top. Two and a half knuckles and crease pointing into your right shoulder. You're gonna go underneath into the fingers and both creases now point into our right shoulder. In terms of alignment, can we make sure, if we're looking for a straighter shot, that shoulders, hips, and feet are all a little bit more square? We've not got a mishmash of opposites, okay? This is all part of point number three. The final thing is, I want you to think about just gripping it and ripping it, and really training, can I be nice and square at the top? So this is flatter at the top, I have a much better opportunity of coming in square. So if you live and breathe those checkpoints, hopefully you can stand over the golf ball and feel a lot less stress and just grip it and rip it. Please, please, please go and try that. And the rain has just started. Let's finish off this. Can we make a birdie? Oh, that should have been a nice little finish. What's the worst thing that can happen? If you're hitting bad shots anyway, <laughs> What about losing that baggage and just trying to grip it and rip it? So answer the question, do I think golf can be made simple? Yes, but we just get in our own way. The hardest six inches in golf is this between your ears. Thank you so much for watching today's video from a rainy Mottram Hall. Um, I look forward to joining you tomorrow for some Saturday fixes. We're talking about five minutes that's gonna change a short game, and you need to do this five minutes every single week because who doesn't wanna chip it closer and make more up and downs? Thanks for watching.